on this video that I may get hurt at some stage. <gasps> so you've just bought a new puppy home, yay! Gosh, they are so much fun, but I guess you're learning pretty fast. There is a lot to think about regarding their health, their behavior, and their nutrition. And let me guess, you've got lots of people sharing their knowledge and perhaps it's just a little bit conflicting. Am I right or am I right? Well, one of the most common questions that I get asked by new puppy owners is when they should spay or neuter their dog. Mm-hmm, yep. Well, over the last few years, there's been so much conjecture about when the actual best age to do this is. And sadly, that there are really no hard and fast rules. But thankfully for us, there's actually been a red, gosh, you are very boisterous, aren't you? Sorry, guys, this is ridiculous. But thankfully, a very large study performed by researchers at the University of Davis was released just last year in 2020, so in July. And basically, they looked at 35 breeds over a 15 year period. And so we have some pretty good guidelines to work off now. Ah! Now just quickly, before we get down to the nitty gritty of discussing when you should desex your dog, I just want to make sure that we're all on the completely the same wavelength when it comes to the terminology that I'm using, okay? So, neutering. Now that's the removal of a male dog's testicles, whereas in the female dog it's removing the ovaries and the uterus in most cases, but sometimes it can just be the ovaries or just the uterus that is actually removed. I'll make a video about that, so make sure you hit subscribe and hit notifications so you don't miss when I release that. Now sometimes I might use the term desex, spay or neuter, and basically I'm referring to the same process. So essentially removing whatever organ, whether it's the, <laughs> hello, whether it's the estrogen from an ovary or testosterone from a testicle. <laughs> I'm, you're a little monster. <laughs> now also, just a little disclaimer, it's wise to remember that research in veterinary medicine is constantly evolving. So what I tell you now is the best available advice I have for you today, but by all means, it could be obsolete within the week. I think she's going nuts. It's also important to be mindful that we have to consider population control. Globally, there is a, a huge overpopulation of unwanted dogs, and it's a very real problem. And one of the ways that we keep population under control is that when a dog is in a pound or a rescue, we spay or neuter them prior to them going to their new home. And this lowers the risk of a new, that a new owner may not actually do the right thing by their dog and spay or neuter them. All right, before we get to the crunch, if you're new here and you haven't met me before, I'm Dr. Lee from Your Vet Online. This is a little Mackenzie, a little White Highland Terrier, and she's naughty! At Your Vet Online, we provide you with 24-7 access to veterinarians. So if you have an issue with your pet or with a horse or with any animal for that matter, you can get in touch with a veterinarian 24-7. So let me guess, you've probably heard the stories about the increased risks of cancer, developmental bone disease, and behavioral issues if dogs are spayed or neutered too early. But does this actually apply to every single dog? What if your dog is already desexed? Have you just put them at huge risk? I have a video that discusses the pros and cons of desexing in general. So make sure that you check out the link. Um, it's up there and also I'll pop it down below. I am going to discuss specific breed recommendations that the study found, so make sure you keep on listening to find out exactly what the recommendations are for your breed. But before I dissect the research, let's just cut to the chase with my own personal current recommendations for timing of neutering and spaying. I have to say, when I'm considering the timing, I'm taking into account the research related to the incidence of joint disorders, such as hip dysplasia, 
cranial cruciate ligament tears or ruptures, and elbow dysplasia. I'm also considering the incidence related to the development of cancers such as lymphoma, mast cell tumors, hemangiosarcomas, osteosarcomas, and mammary cancer. So my ballpark recommendations are as follows. For small breed dogs, which is any dog that's sort of less than 15 kgs, I recommend spaying around the six months of age ballpark. For females, this means before their first season, and for males, it generally means before they start urine marking their territory. Now for larger breeds where you can ensure that females can't accidentally get pregnant and you are quite capable of managing them well while on heat, I recommend that you spay them around the one year of age mark, give or take a little. Now this may mean that for females they've experienced one heat cycle. Now I will say that for those breeds that are particularly prone to cancer, and we call these high risk cancer dog breeds, and for the high risk joint disease dogs, then I would be considering spaying and neutering much later. You want these dogs to have exposure to the sex hormones, estrogen and testosterone, for a prolonged period of time. This may mean that we don't spay or neuter them until after the two year mark. Now I've popped a link to the information in the description if you'd like to check out the study for yourself. But basically, the major finding from this study is that there are breed differences and sometimes sex differences with regards to the increased risks of joint disorders and cancers associated with neutering at various ages. As I said, they are looking at over 35 different breeds. Now if your breed isn't in the list, then look for others that are kind of similar. So in this study, the cancers examined, which previous studies found could be affected by neutering were lymphoma and lymphosarcoma, hemangiosarcoma, mast cell tumors, and osteosarcoma. For females, we also are looking at mammary cancer, pyometra, and urinary incontinence because those can be quite big issues for female dogs. The joint disorders that we're really interested in include cranial cruciate ligament tears or rupture, hip dysplasia and elbow dysplasia. There's a lot of research out there related to those um, bone diseases, so it's an awesome idea to include them in this study. All of the above diseases were examined with regard to dogs neutered within one of the following age periods. Less than six months old, six to 11 months old, one year from that sort of 12 to less than two year period or two to eight years old and the leftover group over eight years although the study didn't follow them past 11 years of age. So rather than going through absolutely every breed I'm just going to outline those breeds that showed significant differences in either the incidence of either joint disease or cancer or urinary incontinence. So you don't need to go hunting for it. Now, if I don't mention your breed, that means that you can spay or neuter at a time that suits you and the dog best. And usually that is actually around the six months of age timing. So let's start with the golden retriever. For females, the risk of cancer is high regardless of spaying. And the incidence of cancer for those that are spayed is actually two to four percent higher than those are, that are intact. So what does that all mean? The recommendation for female golden retrievers is to leave them intact for as long as possible or spay them at two years but watch them really really closely. It's recommended by oncology experts that you actually have them in veterinary examined twice a year. The risk of cancer is that high. For male golden retrievers, they're a little bit different. They have less risks for both joint disease and cancer, but the incidence is still high enough to recommend that we leave them until they're at least a year of age before we neuter them. Okay, you would think Labradors are kind of similar to golden retrievers, but not quite. 
For males, to have some protection from joint issues, the recommendation is to neuter them after six months of age. And for a females, again, for joint protection, we actually recommend after one year of age. Okay, boxes. Well, they're at a high risk of cancer, and the recommendation for both sexes is to desex them after two years of age. The female Cocker Spaniel is another high risk cancer breed, and the recommendation is to spay her after two years of age. So, female Collie dogs. Now, to lower their risk of cancer, they should be desexed after one year of age. Okay, so with Dobermans, who traditionally have been a little bit high in the old cancer issues, it's actually not cancer that we are concerned about with them when it comes to timing of desexing. Interestingly, desexing males after one year of age and females after two years of age actually helps their joints. And this is the prime reason to do that for them. Next on our list, both the female Springer Spaniel and the White Highland Terrier benefit from spaying after one year of age, so the incidence of urinary incontinence is actually lowered. So there's no issues with joints or cancer, it's just the urinary incontinence. Okay, the German Shepherd. Well, no surprises here. Both the male and females need to be desexed after two years old, primarily to prevent increased incidence of, you guessed it, joint disease. Okay, the male giant breed Bernese Mountain Dog is prone to an increase in joint disease if desexed prior to two years. So if you've got one of those guys, desex it later. For females, it doesn't matter. Interestingly, while the giant Great Dane of both sexes are at no greater risk of either cancer or joint disease, there is a bit of a recommendation that we do wait a little bit longer than a year just so that we get a bit more hormone influence as far as the joints go. But the studies actually don't say that they are an increased risk. So with the Great Dane, desex them after one year of age. Surprisingly, the St. Bernard has little issues and can be spayed or neutered after six months of age. Now, the Shetland Sheepdog female is also really prone to urinary incontinence, so the recommendation for her is that we wait until she's at least two years of age before spaying her. Interestingly, the Shih Tzu female should either be spayed really, really young, so before six months of age, or after two years of age and while this sounds really strange the recommendation is that because she's less at risk of developing cancer so either before six months of age or after two years of age is the best time if you've got a female shih tzu so while this paper isn't the be all and end all it does give us a pretty useful guide but we do need to remember that there are other confounding factors that weren't taken into consideration. Just remember, weight is one of those. We know that overweight dogs are far more prone to joint problems. Pretty much though, what this paper has actually told us, that with most breeds or sexes, whether male or female, we can actually de-sex them at any time without major concern about their age. So at least re with regard to the joint disorders or cancers that were actually studied um, and looked at in this study. Of course, other individual factors are totally got to be taken into account. So it's always best to discuss your particular pet with your vet or a veterinarian in general. Now, if you haven't checked out our video on the specific pros and cons of desexing, Head on over there now. I'll take, I'll add a link above as well as down below. Otherwise, we'd love your support by subscribing to our channel and don't forget to hit the little bell so you don't miss any future videos. All right then, guys, take care and have heaps of fun with your new puppy.